All right, welcome everyone to the Public Works and Planning meeting of September 8th, 2020. I need to uh, read a disclaimer here. As always, this meeting of the Public Works and Planning Committee is being conducted electronically pursuant to Governor Bill Lee's Executive Order number 16. I would ask for a motion that conducting the meeting electronically is necessary to protect public health, safety, and welfare in light of the coronavirus. A move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Rachel, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Blair? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sherino? Yes. Chairman Cush? Yes. All right, we are at 100%. Uh, would like to call on uh, Vice Chairman uh, Piercy to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Chairman Cush, I have reviewed the minutes and I find them to be in order and I move for their approval. Need a motion and a second, please. Second. Rachel. Commissioner Dodd. Yes. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Commissioner Piercy. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sherino. Yes. Commissioner Blair. Yes. Chairman Cush. Yes. All right. We will move right into the highway department report if they are ready. And they are. Yeah, they're on the or... Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. I got a, um, a uh, budget amendment. We'd like to move 91000 out of our funding and balance and put it into our uh, bridge bridge fund, specifically for the uh, Plainview project. It was approved by the road board Monday, and I'm bringing it to y'all. All right. Uh, which uh, bridge project is this for? Oh, yeah, for the schools. All right. All right. We have a. Uh, if you can, if you all have access to your iPads, you will see the ninety-one thousand uh, dollar cross transfer of balance. Does anyone have any questions? Motion to approve. We have a motion. Need a second. Second. And we have a second. Rachel. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Blair? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Chairman Cush? Yes. What else do you have? Short and sweet. I, I love it. Thank you. Good job, Cotton. Tanya, you got a tough act to follow. This is Buildings and Codes Report. Good evening, Commissioners. All right, so uh, we issued a total of 326 permits in the month of August, 69 of which were single family dwellings for a total revenue of $111,141. We uh, did a total of 1,654 inspections and drove a little over 8,800 miles. All right, Tanya, for the, uh, for the audience, is that uh, 326 up or down from this time last year? It is down a little bit from this time last year. We are down probably, looks like about 45 inspections, for, or excuse me, permits from last year. Okay. This month last year. All right. And it was a wet month too. For it was. All right. Continue on. All right, and development tax, we collected uh, $391,500. Any questions? There is no questions. Then zoning enforcement, we did a total of 151 inspections in zoning enforcement. Mr. Chairman? Yep. Yes, sir. There are uh, nice. court cases. There are four court cases in August. The very bottom. Yes. Environmental court and zero previously. I don't remember any other environmental cases. Have we? 
I know we were going to be more assertive. What's the going on with these? Our inv our court cases. Uh huh. Why we're not more are there, assertive? Are, yeah, are Sorry, there's four, and are there? Is this the first time you've done environmental court, or is, is this no, a no, 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 increase no. or? Yeah, four is uh, four is a bite typical. Last month we didn't have any um, in environmental court for the last really since COVID. Uh, court kind of slowed down. We didn't have any court. We kind of uh, tried to work more with them out in the field than we did trying to cite them to court because we couldn't get them into court during COVID. So it's just nice starting to pick back up again so the courts are open. Uh, are most of these tall weed and grass enforcement or do you um, recall? There's a fair amount of tall weeds and grass. Open storage is probably our biggest. Tall weeds and grass and open storage is probably our biggest, um, our biggest violations okay. in zoning enforcement. Will you let us know uh, if any of the uh, trash on the road cases come up to environmental court? Because we are always curious about that. We typically don't cite the trash in the road ones because we can only cite uh, violators that are on the property owners themselves um, because we can't. That's typically solid waste. Chairman, Mr. I don't Blair. Know if this is a question actually for Tanya, but uh, a property owner that uh, somebody illegally dumps on their property. Uh, often. I'm sorry? It happens often, and, especially uh, on back roads. So, what happens if they don't have the wherewithal to have it removed in a timely fashion? It, yeah, it's a very unfortunate, but the property owner does. Um, it does fall on the property owner to clean it up. There's been a time or two when we've had to turn to Mac um, to help us out down in Christiana, but for the most part, unfortunately, the property owner, we do advise that they maybe put up cameras or keep an eye out, and if they can get tag numbers or if they can get some sort of evidence of who's dumping it on their property, then we can try and help them out. Are we having, do, is there some process where we're being able to keep up with the number of illegal dumping incidents uh, within the county? We do, we track all of our all of our violations and what type they are. So if you can give me a period of time or you know, whatever it is, what kind of inquiry it is you're looking for, I'd be glad to get that for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions for Tanya? All right, does that, uh, does that conclude your report or do you? That's it, yep, okay. sorry. Uh, we would need a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. And a second, all right, Rachel. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Serino. Yes. Commissioner Blair. Yes. Commissioner Dodd. Yes. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Commissioner Piercy. Yes. Chairman Cush. Yes. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. All right, Doug, we are ready for the uh, engineering and planning report. Good evening, everybody. Those here and attending virtually, hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, just have uh, our normal items tonight. We'll go first over the available lot inventory. You'll see that on your iPad. The available lot inventory through August of this year uh, is 866. Again, these are lots that have been recorded. These are lots that are ready for building permits as we speak. Uh, you can see that that's down about 100 lots from this time last year, so we are seeing more activity. It's up a little bit from last month. We did have some larger plats recorded this past month, so we're kind of seeing leveling, leveling out in about the mid 800s right about now. It's about 840 last month, 866 this month. So that just kind of gives you an overview as to, as to where we are uh, with our available lot inventory. If there's no questions on that, I will move over into the zoning report. Uh, we have two public hearings for your consideration next week. One is for a rezoning application. This is for property located along uh, Lytle Creek Road. This is a, uh, an existing planned development called Lytle Creek Crossing that was approved by the Board of Commissioners back in April of last year. 
And we've also at the Planning Commission seen a preliminary plan for Section 1, uh, which was approved by the Commission, Planning Commission back in October of last year. Uh, since that time, the uh, developers have done a little bit more homework on the site and have found that a large portion of the property that they were going to develop is not going to be suitable for development due to hydric and wetland type soils. So essentially all the residential lots on the west side of Lytle Creek Road have been removed from the development and additional lots have been added on the east side. But even with that, you're looking at a decrease from 132 lots that were originally proposed to 94, which is a reduction of 38 lots. Uh, there is a copy of the original plan development design in your, uh, on your iPads as well as the proposed design uh, in the pattern book, it's just for your uh, reference and review. The standards of this are unchanged as far as what they were asking for originally from last year. So none of those standards are changing. It really is just a reduction in the number of lots. The portion that they're not developing, they're actually taking out of the plan development entirely and they're asking to zone that back to RM, which is residential medium density, which is what it was zoned to begin with. So that's really the only change we're looking at is taking that portion out of the PUD and reducing the amount of lots by about 38. So I'll be happy to answer any questions on that. The other item, that we'll be uh, conducting a public hearing on is actually some uh, ordinance amendments to our zoning ordinance. Uh, of course, as staff, we're always on the lookout for things that need to be tweaked or uh, changed in our ordinance to you know, provide for uh, an easier work environment, enforcement, whatnot. Uh, you'll see that there are five items on here for consideration. I will go into as much or as little detail as you would like me to. I'll just give just quickly uh, an overview. I know uh, Mr. Cush, uh, of course, he's on the Planning Commission, so he's familiar with these uh, amendments. Uh, we are proposing a couple of amendments in our site plan required section. Uh, one of them is just adding some language for a pre-application conference that we see for final plats and preliminary plans, but for whatever reason wasn't in the zoning ordinance for site plans. Just something that we do routinely anyway, but something we thought we'd want to have uh, in the code. Also, our timeline for zoning approval, uh, adding some language there you can see on that, that uh, we just added a little bit of language. Again, this is really more consistent with the uh, plats and plans that we look at in our subdivision regulations, just putting a, uh, an ability for the applicant or the representative to waive the time requirement of 90 days for a, after a submitted application is made to our office for our office or the planning commission to make a determination on that. Again, that's really more housekeeping. It's something we do routinely anyway. We just want to make sure it got in the code. Probably the largest changes that we're proposing are on to the next two items. Uh, the first is the change for the cluster box units, C CBUs or mail kiosks as they're more commonly known. Uh, those regulations that we developed for these were adopted by the Board of Commissioners back in December of 2018. At that time, the Planning Commission was given the power to approve the kiosk site plans, uh, not staff administrative review. And it was understood at that time that after the Planning Commission had seen these for a little while and got a little more comfortable with them, that they would be more comfortable with staff looking at these rather than putting them on the Planning Commission's agenda. Uh, we've seen several of these things over the last couple of years. The Planning Commission uh, stated that they felt comfortable now with staff looking at these uh, as an administrator review. So that's what that change uh, is right there. It's really just allowing staff to review these and approve them administratively as opposed to Planning Commission approval. Uh, under Section 604 and Table 3, uh, the commercial neighborhood zone does allow for residential uses. However, for whatever reason, no uh, bulk requirements such as lot area, setbacks, lot width, et cetera, made it into the ordinance when we did this back in 2012, 2013. So we're just uh, correcting uh, that uh, particular oversight. And then a couple of uh, smaller amendments, one in dealing with fences, walls, and hedges, just clarifying how that's enforced and then adding a item to Appendix A. Uh, the county engineer is mentioned many times in our zoning ordinance. However, his title was not specifically referred to in the appendix. The planning director's position was, but the county engineer isn't. So this language is similar to the planning director, just allowing it to refer to the county engineer or their authorized representative. Uh, the planning commission did conduct a public hearing on both of these items, uh, the rezoning and this, and both passed with very little discussion by a unanimous vote. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have on those. Questions for Doug. On the mail kiosk, is this idea old enough that we have one somewhere that's up and running? Yes. Yeah, there's several out there. Are they working? As far as I know, no one's called us and has complained about any of them. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, there are several that have been constructed. Okay, thank there. you. Mm -hmm.
Anybody else? Seeing none, need a motion to uh, approve Doug's reports. Motion to approve. Need a second? Second. All right, Rachel. Mr. Sherino? Yes. Mr. Blair? Yes. Mr. Dodd? Yes. Mr. Piercy? Yes. Mr. P? Yes. Chairman Cush? Yes. Anything else, Doug? Thank you. I'll see you, uh, see you next week. All right, uh, Mac, if you want to work your way up, uh, the uh, fifth item on the agenda is RFP. The only thing I want to say about that tonight is a reminder that our solid waste uh, subcommittee is tomorrow at 530, in which we will uh, hopefully complete the RFI topic list and uh, go, go to our next step after that. All right, Mac, you are recognized. Good evening. How are y'all? Good. If you look at the landfill report, you can see that it's not been super busy. It's kind of status quo. And we got kind of lucky. We got caught up on some of the maintenance and stuff. And the only piece of equipment that ran last week was the piece of equipment that piles the brush. Nothing else was out there running. That did save us a little bit of money. Any questions on the landfill? All right, let's move on over to the convenience center report. If you look at the totals page, uh, cumulative report, down there at the bottom of the page, you'll see cubic yards and tons for the front loader. That's the school systems. So they generated, you know, they started back in school August, 1,600 tons with only 60% of the students there. You know, so the, if all of them that were there would be having a problem. We don't have enough service set up for that. Also let you know that our uh, convenience center in Eagleville experienced a fire Saturday morning. The little building, most of you have been to a convenience center, the little building that houses the center attendants burned. Uh, the fire department did get there and put it out, but it's very much a total loss. Uh, we've made some contacts today. We're going to try to get one of those portable office units delivered this week if we can get it this week and rent that until we can come up with something else. Uh, the mayor and I hadn't discussed it a whole lot, but he's got some thoughts on what he'd like for the building to look at. And all these buildings in those centers are pushing 30 years old and they're not in real good condition. So we may wind up having to replace more than just the one that burned. Big as a structure? Uh, 10 by, it's almost 10 by 10. It's not quite square, 10 by 12 maybe. I see all kinds of little small buildings. Uh, people sell those things all the time for storage units and stuff like that. Uh, I, I guess you call some of them Dutch barns and just storage barns, but some of them are, are 10 by 10 or 10 by 15 and, and pretty good size and well built. Would it have to, it's, it's something like that? A that's, that's basically what we have now. What I would hope to be able to do is put something a little more permanent. If we have a tornado come through the area, our employees have nowhere to go. The safest place on that piece of property for our employees would be inside the trash compactor, literally, because it's bolted to the ground. That's where I go. <laughs> yep. Uh, so our, our centers have stayed busy. Uh, if you look at the, the last page of the report where it's talking about the tonnages, uh, it's almost 300 tons, 278 more tons, trash tons than we had la this time last year. Uh, most of the compactors average about 10 tons per load. That's 27 extra loads. So our open top volume is down, but our trash volume is up quite a bit more. And speaking of open top volume, what we would like to propose is add something that can go into the open tops and call it fixtures. Still don't want to take building materials, but we can take fixtures. And a fixture would be a toilet, a sink, a ceiling fan, those type things, but not necessarily building materials. Any thoughts on that? What would we do with these materials? 
where would they ultimately end up? They'll go to the landfill. They'll go in our open tops. Right now, when the COVID started, uh, we were generating three times the amount of trash. So we, not, we didn't take any building materials. So toilets, and all those things that I'm calling fixtures, is actually would be building materials. So we're going to lighten up and take some of those. But if you're tearing down your, your fence or you ripped up your hardwood floor, and we're not taking that. Hot water heater? That would be a fixture. Anybody have thoughts on that? Just a point of clarification. So that you're, you're, you, you, you instilled that policy during COVID because the material had increased. If there's a decrease, can it come back? I don't think we need to bring it all, all back. I think if, you know, a very small amount, but if you're doing a large construction project at home, you need to take it on the landfill. Our centers are really not designed for those large type loads. We've been able to handle them for all these years. And that's what got has some of the residents upset. We did a little building project there at home, uh, ripped up linoleum flooring and, and had tile put down in the, in the uh, kitchen and dining room and took out four doors and replaced. So I had the, the doors and the trim and the remnants of the tile and I went to the middle point and it was uh, 25 bucks is what I had to pay. But that's, it wasn't a whole lot. I mean, I had it on the back of a flatbed ton and it didn't want him a fourth of a load there. Are we still using the uh, shredders at Weekly? Shredders. You know, the the devices that Mike and I went and watched. We haven't used them. Uh, the first week that COVID hit us so hard, we had them come in and help us that weekend, and we haven't used them since. Uh, how come? Or were they? I thought they were rather functional. And, and I'm, I'm trying to just, you asked what's our opinion. Could we crush some construction material? So the... That's what maybe asked that question. Right. Uh, the, the, we're not taking that type of material. We're just taking furniture and that type of stuff. Uh, and it can crush furniture as well. But it, if we crush those loads, our loads went down from normally having start on a Monday and you know, we finish up the weekend and we dis, I'll dispatch Sunday evening for Monday morning. We would commonly have anywhere from 125 to 150 loads. Now we're starting on Mondays with somewhere between 68 to 80. And all that's that's the open tops. Uh, I've just got to ask again, do we do we have an increase in debris because people are staying home, but we've stopped using the shredders or the compactors? Right. I don't understand why we'd st we would stop when we have more trash coming our, in. Our trash is coming in and going into the compactors. That's where the increase in loads is. Now, the, the, we decreased the construction material, and that increase in the regular trash made up for it. So we're still hauling more loads than we have in the past. Is that your question? I, I, I think he's, I'm, I'm with you. I think he said our loads increased in general trash, but our open top loads have decreased mainly because of the ban we put on a number of items so consequently we hadn't need needed to utilize the crush it or whatever the, the is that what they, it's called and he, here's our problem if you come in there with one piece of a two before that's four foot long yes sir you can put it right over there we have residents that actually give our center attendants a hard time. They've got a 16 foot trailer full of that type of stuff that we don't even take that trailer, but they'll start unloading it and we don't have any teeth. So we can't, to answer your question that you asked earlier, we can't get back into that business. Uh, that we had a lot of small little contractors that was just wearing us out and it's really hard to stop them. We've got them stopped right now. But if we open back up very much, then we're gonna have a hard time keeping them out. We're keeping them out to make room for other types of debris and to Our, not ours have is to for residential use only so uh, and there's a sign on every gate that says if you're a business this is not a place for you the homeowners who are doing remodeling have been trapped in this that is correct cycle mm -hmm. and the other thing that some people are getting their feelings hurt rental property is a business that's not your residence that's your business the person that lives there is the resident glad you made the comment about your residential only believe it or not 
I had a complaint about the convenience center. It's very unusual. The lady owns a business, and you know about it. She's got her name on everything she can drive. She gets in her car, truck, whatever it was, throws her house trash in it, runs up to the convenience center to throw it away. Big controversy. Involved an attendant, a driver of a truck, and whatever. How could that be avoided? What I, if you're one of my area center attendants, what I try to explain to you is use a little common sense. So if you have Piercy's landscape and trailer come, or truck comes in and it's got one bag of trash in it, take this bag of trash and let him go. And if he's got landscaping material, don't take anything from him. Send him on to the landfill. As you said, common sense. It's getting very short around here. I know it's hard to find people to run the centers. It's a dirty job. It stinks. Everybody's on them. But have you ever thought about maybe giving them a week's training in customer service or anger management so they don't just go off the handle and hurt residents' feelings and then cause all these calls to the commissioners? You know, just have them say, hey, I'm doing my job. Throw your bag of trash in here and we'll go from there and just let them go to the second time. Because the lady was quite upset, and I was very much on her side. She was in a rock's throw at that convenience center and been there for years and years. But I know every vehicle she's got, it's got her business name on it. But, you know, maybe we could just give them a week's training in waiting on a customer. Just a week. Because most of them don't have a clue. You right. know, they take the job. Most of them have got a little age on them, and they're pretty quick to trip, you know and uh, probably would help somewhere down the line. I appreciate the, the, the you're mentioning it. It's hard to do. We have a meeting once a year, get all of our center attendants together one time a year for half a day. And we do training then, and it's mostly the safety stuff, that bloodborne pathogens and all that kind of stuff that everybody has to go through on a yearly basis, and then it's operational. And we do talk about how to treat people, but we only do it that one time. Uh, to try to get that bunch together in a, in a meeting is kind of hard. Uh, I can task our convenience center coordinator with trying to instill some of that. His thing is he wants everybody to be nice. Nice goes a long ways. It does. Especially in that kind of situation. Well, what, in fact, it will diffuse most problems. Our, our situation most often is the people coming into the convenience center are on their way to somewhere else. They're not just out to go take the trash and go home. So if they get in a line, now they're running later than they intend to, and they get out and a little bit huffy and say some things that are a little bit hurtful and in human nature, sometimes you're going to respond. Not always, but some of them do. Commissioner Blair. For the uh, homeowners or you know, if you have a couple of rental houses and you're doing renovation projects and you're not, uh, you're not actually a, an artisan or a subcontractor or a contractor, is there a place to, that is, is there a website for Middle Point to, to share with these individuals that how much, uh, if they have to take it to Middle Point, is a, a full load of a backup of a pickup is going to cost you this much. A, a 12 foot trailer is going to cost you this much to dump at Middle Point. Is there some place? Is there a website that will tell them what it's going to cost them to to go to Middle Point? Not that I'm aware of. Middle Point has a posted gate rate, and I know they're not charging the posted gate rate right now. If there was, if there's some way to get that information out, that you know, okay, if you're doing your home remodeling you can't take it to convenience center you have to take it to middle point and you know if we could tell them or find a way to direct them to what the cost will be for that they still might be upset but at least they would know i talked to a gentleman today uh, he was in the smyrna area and they pulled up all the hardwood flooring in in the home and put down linoleum and I, he didn't say why he just that's what he did and ask him, he asked if he could take it to the weekly lane. I said, no, sir, you know, we can't take it there. It needs to go to Middle Point. He said, well, how many thousands of dollars will that cost me? I said, it won't be that much. 
and I told him, you know, what I hauled away last week, and he said, so we're talking about a hundred or so. I said, I don't know the price, but a hundred is probably a pretty reasonable guess. And he said, okay. Say that they're not adhering to the gate prices presently. Did I hear that? Yes, they're cheaper than their gate prices right now. Less expensive. Mm -hmm. okay. Y'all are on board with the fixtures. Are you talking about an at each convenience center an open top for dedicated just to fixtures? No. Where would it be located? It would, it would still go in with all the open tops get dumped at the same place. There's no need in separating. What, where it goes, it'd just be the items, the number. Right now we're taking what's normally in your kitchen trash can, your recyclables, and three bulk items. So the fixture would be in addition to three bulk items. Okay, all right. Would, would the crush it, I'm just talking out loud, would the crush it machine have any value on smashing some of those fixtures down or is it even worth getting that involved? Yes, it is very efficient in, in smashing things down. Smash the, it, that's what it's called. Smash it is the name of it. Yeah. Uh, what we get into is if you do it at a center that's not extremely busy, which we do, they may not refill those things because usually what I would do is send him a text or an email on Sunday evening. You know, this is what we need for Monday. Sometimes on a Friday night, I would, if we got real busy on Friday, I'd send him a text, you know, can you do these Saturday morning and do, you know, and then we'll do it again on Sunday. But if you smash several at a, busy, at a center that's not extremely busy, they don't fill up till the end of the week. And you get, can't really smash them again, and then it's hard to get them dumped out. It's a hard thing to try to schedule and make it work to where it's, you can get them empty for the weekend. Fixtures are going to include a toilet and what else? Toilet, a sink, uh, chandelier. Washer dryer. The washer and dryer we take already. Refrigerator. Take already. Deep breeze. Take that too. Water heater. Yes, we take those. So all we're adding is a toilet. Do what? Toilet, ceiling fan. That's all we're adding. No, it'll be more than that. It just uh, what we're trying to do is take some of that. You know, I'm capable of changing my own toilet. I don't have to hire somebody to come do that. So if if my wife decides we need a new one, then I change it. Well, right now there's no place to go with it except for Middle Point. So then we could take that, and we've got several homeowners that are doing their own. What this washer? We're not taking your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we take we do take dishwashers. That's, <laughs> that's that's usually my when I get that that call on the telephone. That's what I tell them. We're not taking your spouse, but uh, appliances. You know, in your kitchen, you've got dishwasher, uh, a range, maybe a cooktop, uh, refrigerator. Some people have freezers in there too. You know, those we've all we've taken those. Now the refrigerants, anything that has refrigerant in it, uh, we're paying to get rid of that at Clark. They're not, they don't take that from anybody else, but they do take it from us, but they charge us $15 per unit. And then they extract the Freon out of it and do whatever it is. We don't, at one time we had a center attendant that, that had all the equipment to do that. So if you called us and you had a refrigerator, I'd ask you if you wanted to, you know, to get rid of it and have somebody come and get it. And he charged a little bit. He would give you a price anyway. I don't think that he actually charged anybody. But he would take it home and extract all the Freon out of it and then resell that. But he's passed away since. He was a good fellow. Yeah, I, I'm, o I'm okay with trying the fixture idea. My only concern is those items tend to be odd shaped and bulky and you wind up with more air than you do, well, I, that's not true, but you wind up with a lot of void space. So to me, they would fill up fast 
and if you could somehow you know crack the porcelain and break that down into bits it would certainly create more storage most area. often if they throw the, the toilet or the tank you know sometimes they'll separate them sometimes they bring them all in one piece but it, once you get it six foot high and drop it over in that container if that container is empty it shatters that toilet yeah. Will the attendants be responsible for helping put them in an open top? Okay. Cause Residents are responsible to bring their help with them. And we changed that when we changed from uh, workman's comp to OJI. The job descriptions, we had to go through and look at them really, really closely because with OJI, if you injure yourself doing something that's not in your job description, it is not covered. So we changed it in our description that our center attendants assistance is by giving them directions, not physically helping. Now we have some center attendants that, like when you had your knee surgery, you get out of the vehicle and move real slow, they're gonna grab your trash and have it thrown away before you get to it. They're not supposed to do that, but they, they see you moving slow and look like you might need a little help, they'll do it for you. Recognize Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mike, have we ever looked at, have you ever been over to Williamson County, any of their convenience centers? I've been by them, but I've not ever stopped yeah, anyone. They actually have made it convenient for their all their citizens. They've actually, I don't know who, who did it for them, but they've built a mound. You drive up on the mound to where the citizens can park and get out. They take it out of their trunk or trailer or whatever it is, and they take it over the edge and dump it. They, they'll, they'll back the open top right into it to where they don't have to try to get a toilet up over their head and over into the open top, similar to what uh, Commissioner Piercy's talking about, but all their convenience centers have that just ease of hurting, not hurting the uh, the customer trying to get rid of, make it easier for them to do that. And I don't know if we have enough room in our convenience centers to do something like that or not. Most of ours do not. The one that comes to mind is uh, the other side of Cedars of Lebanon State Park when you're going 231 toward Lebanon, there's one that you can see right beside the road and they have the mound like you're speaking of. Uh, there's two things going on there is every municipality inside of Wilson County has curbside collection. So their centers aren't as used as much as ours and they don't have the population that we have. Yeah, but still the fact of, a, of an open top of trying to, our citizens trying to get things yeah. up over their head and over into it when we it's like, hard <laughs> i mean yeah, it's yeah hard. you knock your teeth out and, you know. but like it at weekly lane uh if we keep try to keep three compactors extra compactors over in the corner empty because they're notorious for trying to get all the traffic through so they run all the compactors at one time and they fill them all three up at one time so you have to go in there and, and basically yeah. close the center down quickly uh, and then if, if those receiver boxes aren't there in the corner, there's 14 open tops of trash. To do what you're asking to do at Weekly Lane, you could probably get two of those mounds in and you could get two on either side of a mound. So you're gonna go from 14 to eight open tops. Well, after our last uh, meeting, um, <clears throat> city manager Hercules and the mayor, they were watching and, and they heard about our property that mm -hmm. that um, is right behind it that we own and uh, so they called me the next morning and they're in the process of moving uh, all that construction uh, yard uh, stuff that they had from their water department so that is now available for us so I think as we go through this RFP Mr. Chairman that we <clears throat> and be part of this process whoever comes forward with whatever um, uh, you know suggestions in an rfp that we look at our convenience centers as well and maybe redoing them making them more yeah. consumer friendly you know to where it's easier for people to get rid of their trash are all our open tops the same height yes all of them in the centers are we have those are all 30 yard, 30 cubic yard containers we have one 20 cubic yard container that we don't have a clue where it came from it's been here longer than anybody else has uh, but we did put a new bottom in it a couple of years ago. We have two 40 yard open tops and the open tops are used just for storage and stuff. They do make them shallower though, don't they? Yes. The 30 yard is roughly six foot tall. The 20 yard is four, four and a half foot tall. 
but you got to remember that if you make them smaller, lower to the ground, then you have to haul them more often. All right, Mac has uh, offered an idea for the uh, fixture open top. Does anybody have a, a strong opinion on that one way or the other, or feel strong enough to turn that into a motion, or do we want to take that under advisement? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. P. I'd make a motion that we'd allow uh, another appliance, I guess you would say, or what did, what did you, fixture, what was the fixture, term you're using, Mac? Fixture. fixture. Okay, uh, I'll make a motion that we add one more fixture to the allowance of what we can drop at the convenience center. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any, any discussion? You would have done this uh, a little earlier. <laughs> Mac, does, does, does that motion cover your request or do we need to add to that just a no, hair? That, that covers it. And uh, when I went to the landfill last week, uh, Linda runs the scales and she was there when I worked there. I think she's the most senior employee on the property now. I'm not talking about years, I'm talking about experience there. But <clears throat> I pulled up on the scales and actually Don was running the scales and she saw me when I stepped out of the truck. She said $400. They hadn't even looked in the truck yet. <laughs> and she, she had heard about the fixture thing, too. And she said, please do that. So. <laughs> All right, Rachel, will you uh, hold the roll? Oh, I'm sorry, did you have a... I prepared to vote. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Blair? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Chairman Cush. Yes. Okay, last month I said something to you about HHW, Household Hazardous Waste. TDEC normally sponsors that for us, and they're not doing it at all this year. So I got in touch with a contractor that has been, been doing it. Actually, as of today, TDEC does not have a contractor. They're supposed to open bids later on this month. Uh, but their, their contractor that's been doing it for us gave us a quote based on historical numbers. And we can do what we want to do. And I think you have this on your iPads, do you not? Hold on. Okay. So if you look at the bottom, you'll see the total estimated number, and right above that is uh, energy, in, energy recovery for eight fee and then subtotal. And above that is two paints. I asked them to put in a price for paint. We don't currently collect paint at the HHWs. We collect, if you have latex, you have to get rid of that yourself, dry it up. And in all base, we set up an appointment. But I asked them to give us an estimated price if we did take the latex paint we would do it on the first Saturday of November of 2020. It will be the only time we will do that. And it will be for Rutherford County residents only. No businesses and no outside of county because we're just paying for it ourselves. And advertise that this is your only time to get rid of latex paint. Their estimate would be cost us $5,500, almost $5,500 to deal with that paint. But their their estimate, based on historical numbers, would be twenty eight thousand five hundred twenty dollars if we take the paint. If you don't take the paint, then it's going to be less than that. It's going to be roughly twenty three thousand. But that's guessing at how many because it's price per pound. So the, if there's more pounds come in, then it's going to be more dollars. So is that something y'all want to pursue, or is something you'd rather not do? What's the motive to have this expense? If we don't have this expense, is it is it, wind is it up in the trash convenience the for the, the customer, or it would be in the trash? Okay, that's now it's going to be on the side of the road, or it's going to illegally go to the landfill, or they're going to have to pay to take it somewhere. Share something with you that I hope nobody's watching tonight. As a homeowner. All these chemicals that you have under your sink and your pool chemicals and all that, you can put that in your trash. It's con 
conditionally non-exempt because it's coming from the resident. Still not the right thing to do. So that's the reason TDEC has provided these HHWs for all these years. And that's part of the reason I want to have at least one is to keep it out of the landfill. Can you legally do it? Yes, you can, but it's not the right thing to do. Chairman, I may be naive, but I think most people do not today do not want to put hazardous materials in the ground. They would rather, if they know there is an opportunity to do it properly, will take advantage of this. Of course, there's always that small percentage, but I don't think we have a choice but to do this. I, I think it's, you know, it's a prerequisite. And if we do this and we do the paint thing, we're doing it differently from what TDEC does. What I ask them to price for us is for them to solidify the paint and put it in the landfill instead of sending it to the waste energy plant. So if you look at latex paint solidification and then paint for waste energy, you know, that paint for waste energy would be your oil base. But we don't have to take that at the HHW because all you have to do is call and we'll set you up an appointment for that. Up here somewhere, light fixtures, fluorescent tubes. We had 47 pounds in the last two events. Think about what a tube weighs. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. You know, so that's a whole lot of boxes. We take those at Haley Road every day from residents. So there's, there's some things in here that may or may not come in. The ones I've been to, Wayne, have been, have been pretty well attended. The ones I've been to, so I think the citizens are looking for an opportunity. So I support that. I just wonder what the alternative is. And we, we've had good attendance at those in the past, haven't we? Yes, TDEC offered us, when I first started, is when the two events a year went away. And then a couple of years ago, they asked if we wanted to have two again. And what they were looking at is seeing if we would have better participation or just split the numbers up. And my fear was going to split the numbers up. It increased both, both times. Uh, and it really, really helps on uh, lawn care. Ours is early enough in the spring that your old gas that you didn't get rid of last last year, you can get rid of. And it's usually the first no first Saturday in November, so you can get rid of it because you already done mowing your grass for the for the summer. But what I would would like, and I, we can't really put a number on it, is if you want to do this, let's vote to do it and put a cap on it. And if you're going to put a cap on it, then we're going to have to try to keep an idea of what we're spending as they come through and then turn them away. It's going to be hard to do that. So this estimate, we're going to spend a little less than $30,000. If everybody really attends, then we're going to spend quite a bit more. This is going to be done at one location? Yes. Well, we could charge a small fee to help recover some of this cost. Our residents won't pay it. They to answer might. your question, we, we could attempt to. Uh, you have to. If you have to set up to do cash, check, and credit cards, if you're going to do it that way, then we're not. We can get it set up between now and then, but we've never charged for it before. Advertise it cash only. If you're going to advertise it, you could advertise it cash only. Most people can prepare with enough advance notice to get a few dollars, you know. I mean, I'm not opposed to charging for it. I don't know how you do the breakdown on, on what it's going to be. I mean, if what happens where they come up with these weights at the end of the collection, all day long they've been putting light fluids together in barrel 55 gallon drums and then they're putting the other chemicals in barrels still in the container and then they'll weigh all that and that's where the weights come from to do what you're asking to do would probably almost have to weigh each each resident stuff to get a fair price none of this is commercial right not supposed to be charge a flat gate fee just to come in the gate and cost you x number of dollars we can do that like going to the drive-in theater. They can help clean up Rutherford County. They'll be getting rid of their hazardous waste. They'll be doing the right thing. Charge them five bucks and roll on. Last few events, we've had somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 vehicles.
much pleasure. I would like for the director to make a recommendation so we can either, you know, we can up or down. Are you going, Commissioner Pierce, are you looking at trying to pay for the event by the, the fee or just collect some money? It would be nice if we could pay for the entire amount, but I really don't see that happening. If you said you just had 300 vehicles come, that would be quite an enormous amount. Right. And it was just an idea, you know. It's it's up to the rest of the commission. You know, I'll support whichever way y'all want to go. $28,000, it's a lot of money if you hadn't got it. You look at it that way, so, you know. We don't currently have it in the budget, so we would need to do a budget amendment to pull it off. Well, that makes it a lot of money, don't it? What? <laughs> that makes it a lot of money. You don't have it. <laughs> I'm okay with collecting would you say $10 a car. How would we advertise this event in November? That's going to be the very hardest thing that we've ever tried to do. We want every resident of Rutherford County to know about it, but nobody else. Yeah. You know, so lady you and I spoke to, all commercial vehicles, it's going to be hard to let her in. It's going to be harder than that to keep her out. <laughs> <laughs> The ones done by TDEC were advertised, but we would we would want to be more pointed because TDEC could, we're paying for this one, so we want to make sure it's Rutherford only. Yes. How have we advertised the previous ones? In the previous ones, it's, it's always been on TDEC's website, you know, for the, the entire calendar year of, of who's going to have it where. Since TDEC has sponsored all of them, any Tennessee resident can go to any one of them. It doesn't matter. Uh, with us paying for this ourselves, we don't want that to happen. We just want to do ours. Uh, I, somehow we're going to have to identify them as a Rutherford County resident. And I don't know if you want to do it with the vehicle that they're driving or their license plate or their, their uh, driver's license in their pocket. I don't know which way you want to do it. I don't like the, the, license, the driver's license because you only renew them every eight years. So we've got some people that could possibly have three, three addresses in eight years. Well, you'd also have to have multiple insertions in the DNJ, so that's going to cost you a little money. You need to put it on TV, that's going to cost you a little money. So there's going to be, you know, there's going to be a couple thousand dollars of advertisement if you're going to get people, get people there. Talk about Nashville Television? No, I'm talking about RCTV or... That doesn't cost you anything. Okay, well... Uh, DNJ is going to be a few bucks. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, city, yeah, city website. Yeah, uh, yes, Chairman P. Every time we've had one of those, I've gotten an email, and I was I was assuming that the county was putting that out. Is that not the fact? Oh, sure. The state, the state actually does that. We, When we do those, uh, usually it's a Smyrna club, either the girls basketball team or the ag department or the horticulture department. Uh, we'll get eight students to do the survey, and part of that survey is getting your email address, and the state gets all that. So that's that's the reason you're getting the emails. Is there any way we could uh, solicit the state to get our local emails, or do they get them divided up that way? I don't know the answer to that, but I can sure call and ask. Well, if we had access to them, that might be an easy way to advertise it. To our citizens without costing an arm and a leg. Other thing we do is we've got signs made up, and it's a it's a street sign, and it tells you when it is and what day of the month and time of day and all that kind of stuff. And normally, what we do with that is we'll take one of those orange construction cones barrels and attach that sign to it and put it in your way where you have to go around the barrel, and hopefully it makes you read the sign. A lot of it's been ran over that way, though. Are you talking about at the convenience centers? Yes, sir. We try to put, okay. try to put that out a couple or three weeks ahead of time. That way, hopefully, you'll see it. 
And then we try to get it in the papers and, and on all the media, stuff, the social media stuff that Ashley does. That was going to be my next question. Ashley does an email, of course she does, to the commissioners, but does she have a database of, of citizens that's a growing database of some kind? That Not that I'm aware of. Now, she may have, but I don't know about it. Mr. Mayor, does Ashley have access to the county residents via email, social media, uh, a hard mailing? Commissioner, I'm not, I'm not sure if she has a, a database of all the citizens, um, but I do know that they have a pretty thorough between her and all the PIOs uh, for Smyrna. Laverne has a PIO. The city has a PIO. They, I think they could cobble together a, a pretty extensive uh, uh, message where they're all working together on, on getting the message out. We could get the information to the civic clubs. I think they would be more than happy to get that out to their members. Oh, sure. Yeah, and they, uh, the POs could do that and contact, uh, you know. I, I'll get her to, I'll call her, um, if she's not listening tonight, I'll call her tomorrow and see what they could put together and then maybe uh, inform you all tomorrow night. Okay. That work, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. And I'll try to call Robert Wadley at TDEC and see if we can get it from him. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Chairman P. One other, one other thing comes to mind on that. Uh, we have a, an emergency contact list. And of course, this wouldn't be an emergency through Bridge. And I was wondering if maybe that would be a point of contact we could use. Mayor may have a opinion on that. We'd have to refine the description of that as an emergency. That's something we could look at, though. I'm open to it. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Before uh, before we get too far down the road as far as advertising and mail outs, we haven't really decided if we want to spend the twenty nine thousand dollars plus or minus so l let's decide do we do we pass on this do we do we budget the money that would have to come out of some other budget item i move that we approve okay we have we have one motion to, uh, a motion to approve do i have a second mr chairman i'll second if you don't have we have a second uh any discussion is there any way, Wayne, we could get a comfort level of a, of a higher number if it exceeds that budget or if we're committed to it or we're willing to spend twice that much? Because it could go up the day of the event, correct? It could go up significantly. Uh, the, the, your list was uh, historical data, Rutherford County, 300 cars, all that. So it's, it's a pretty solid Yes. Educated guess? Yes, it is. And the, the contractor actually had all this, and TDEC has this information. So they got together. That's where they came up with it. Uh, TDEC is actually helping us to do this if we choose to do it. Uh, they're not going to have any money in it, though. Uh, I was thinking off the top of my head, and we may want to go tomorrow, not tomorrow night, Thursday night, to budget and do a budget amendment for $50,000. And that way, surely we won't spend it all, but do it just for this project, whatever's not spent goes right back into general fund. So I, th I think the director has said put a $50,000 cap on it. Are you willing to amend your motion to $50,000 cap? Yes, sir. And are you Does your motion include trying to charge a fee or not? Not. Chairman. Chairman P, are you okay with your second on the $50,000 cap? I, I am for now, but, you know, I want to give it a little thought between now and Thursday. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Mr. Chairman, my, my feeling about charging, I, and I think that's fair, I think it's a good suggestion, but I'd hate uh, to have, you know, vehicles pull up to... Uh, you know, to let us have this stuff and let it be disposed properly and then not have any cash. Yeah. 
and turn around and, and go dump it somewhere. And uh, that is that continues to be a concern of mine. Yeah, I, I would much rather have a donation box set up and have them, have them donate if they feel sure. to, to the charity of my choice. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the recycle Rutherford or something like that. But all right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Rachel, would you call the vote? So a yes would be for the expenditure. Mr. Blair. Yes. Mr. Dodd. Yes. Mr. Piercy. Yes. Mr. P. Yes. Mr. Sherino. Yes. Chairman Cush. Yes. All right, so Mac, in the, in the meantime, well then, as director, will you put together an action plan in terms of uh, how we get this advertised to the Rutherford County public, uh, as well as um, uh, perhaps how we get this on social media, chat with whoever, use your tools, whoever we need to chat with and come up with a plan of execution the reason I wanted to try to bring this up and get it approved tonight it gives us roughly two months before it happens so if we could also get the other municipalities and their meeting every meeting they have mentioned it yeah that way you know most time most often it's only Rutherford County residents that we pay attention to what we have going on anyway and Commissioner Piercy brings up a good point about about the money and I like the donation uh, option also I wonder how many people when they have their vehicle test, you know, it's nine bucks. You know, how many people do it with cash and how many do it with plastic? I, I know that's probably not something we have right off the top of our well, head. Well, it used to only be cash up in, up until just a few years ago. So, but but now oh, since, it is, since there is some plastic, I wonder if the majority of it is plastic now rather than cash. Because I know a lot of people that tend not to carry cash yeah. around anymore. Everything's plastic. Everything's plastic. I don't know that they, you can pay with a card. I've, always, I've never had, had them ask which way. They just say I need $9. And you, can play pl you can do plastic now. Yeah. But that's only been within the last couple of years. Yeah. All right. We need to approve. Uh, I'm not sure if Max is done yet. I think I am, unless y'all have something okay. else. We need to prove his reports, and then I have a question in regards to Piercy's uh, education or training comment. Uh, we need a motion to approve Max reports. And we have approve a, we the have report. A, yeah, we have a, a, a Commissioner Serino, and we need a second. Second. Second by Mr. Blair. Okay. So, Rachel. Mr. Dodd. Yes. Mr. Piercy. Yes. Mr. P. Yes. Mr. Sherino. Yes. Commissioner Blair. Yes. Chairman Cush. Yes. All right. Uh, I want to I want to piggyback off uh, Commissioner Piercy's uh, thought process on training on attendance. Uh, Max stated we do it once a year. Uh, we need to do that more. Let, let me let me just, first of all give my my opinion on why. For many residents in the county, the only face-to-face -face contact with Rutherford County are the convenience center attendees. The other group that I can think of that they may have face-to-face -face contact with would be the sheriff's department, and that could be. That could be in a bad way. Um, so we, we, it would behoove us to try and put our best foot forward and have those people uh, that are the frontline people. And I understand that uh, those people, we wish we could pay them more. I understand that that is not the most glamorous job in the county or the state, but by golly, we need those folks. And they do represent the county. And for like I said, for many, that may be the only face or collaboration they have with a, a county employee. So it's important that it be as pleasant as possible. We have had incidents this year where 
that uh, uh, those conversations have not been so well, not been so good, and we need to fix that. So I'm going to suggest that you reach out to your coordinate, convenience center coordinator or yourself, reach out to Sonia and see what training may be already available for handling uh, the uh, dissatisfied customer or customer relations. I know in those of us that are in business, we often have to subscribe as part of our employment. We have to take quarterly little meeting, one hour meetings on safety, on hazardous material, on um, anything from public relations to uh, you name it. There's a whole gamut of plug, you know, <coughs> plug and play topics on business that we have to uh, continue, part of our continuing education. But it, it's important that those people understand uh, that yeah, a lot of people sit in line on the shoulder and it's frustrating and you mentioned that they have places to go, but it's vital that we maintain a level of decorum out there, even though the decorum is not the best it can be. So uh, I'm, I would like to suggest that we see what training is available, particularly for new hires. I would think they need to go through a it doesn't have to be a week. This can be done in probably half a day at first. Uh, a new hire training program, and then perhaps once a quarter, at least twice a year, we have some couple hour training program for those folks. And so HR and risk management both have some training opportunities for employees to go online and do their training. The county highway department and the solid waste departments clientele does not do online stuff uh, out of the solid waste department I can't speak for the highway department but out of the solid waste department there are seven people eight people now that have computer access the rest of them don't even have them well could I'm just asking could they not come to your office at a given time that's set up and even staggered one person at a time and do a one-hour computerized training class and then you sign off on it we could we could try to you know that's with ours it's not it's not going to be computerized it'd have to be voice and paper okay so you have no you tell me you don't have a computer at your office we have computers but our our employees aren't computer savvy well i guess what i'm saying is if you if there was a pre-programmed 45 minute class on customer relations and all you did was sit them down in a chair and you push play and they sit there for 45 minutes and then they took a little quiz at the online quiz and all they had to do was push yes or no surely they're capable of doing that I think yes probably okay. all right that's what I'm asking if you'll check into that anything else how many attendants do you have Matt uh, 40, no we don't, we're supposed to have 42, and I think we've got 38 right now. I've got an interview with one tomorrow, he's actually a college student, uh, he can't work on Tuesdays, but all his other classes are online, so we've never done it with college students before, but when you don't have any applicants, you try to look and see what you can do. Their average age would run what? Center attendance. Average age of the solid waste department used to be, I hadn't asked Sonia to run it in a while, was 60, 63, and that was department-wide. The most of the center attendants, they're gonna be, I'd say their average is gonna be almost 70. I've got one that's 83. On an age of that, of that amount, would they not be better off to be one-on-one -on -one trained, maybe a half a day a piece or something at the center? Could do it that way too. Sure. Convenience center. You have someone that helps you. Your convenience center coordinator. coordinator. What does he do? He is responsible to see that they get trained. He's also responsible to make sure the centers are kept clean and orderly and all that type of stuff. And uh, he's also talking to them, you know, about staying nice and polite, not that, that type of stuff. But he's uh, he took the county vehicle that I had, and when I started driving it, it had thirty thousand miles. It's an old four. AAA pickup, nothing wrong with it. Had 30,000 when he got it, it had 50, now it's already got 80, and he hadn't been on the job but 
just a few months. He's going from center to center all day. Thank you. All right, I got one more piece of other business. Uh, this uh, is an item that uh, has come from our solid waste subcommittee. Uh, Republic has reached out to us uh, in regarding to a tour potential of Middle Point this fall. And there are two dates, a total of four slots that they have proposed. So write this down. Uh, we need to get back with them uh, as soon as possible. Uh, Tuesday, October 6th, uh, from 10 a.m. to noon. So these are two hour windows of, of uh, touring. Also, October 6th, Tuesday, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. There's also uh, a next calendar date of Wednesday, the next day, Wednesday, October 7th, from 10 a.m. to noon, and also again from two to four. Now, they're limiting, because of COVID and safety reasons, they're limiting uh, each of those four slots to four commissioners total. So, uh, let Rachel know as soon as you have checked your calendars, if you want to go, give Rachel your slots because again, the first four that sign up for any given slot will be, have first priority. Then you need to fall into your second or third choice. So uh, if you would, if you can actually uh, have that to Rachel by tomorrow night's meeting, that would be fantastic. Uh, Rachel, I would go for October 7th any any of the two slots right. as, as chairman uh, in, in talking to brick uh, probably like to to encourage members of this committee to be the first ones to sign up and then we'll offer it to whoever doesn't sign up we'll offer it okay. to the other um, commissioners to give them the opportunity to see it as well right and we'll have to have someone from the press I'm sure it, uh, to, to make sure everything's on the up and up. So uh, get those dates into Rachel uh, by the end of tomorrow night's meeting, if you would, and then we'll report back to Brick. Anything else for Mac? Anything else other business? We will see you tomorrow at 530 to finish up the RFI topics. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Commissioner P.